Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, the message today we have is uh, the, the theme of it is how to overcome overwhelming odds. Amen. How to overcome overwhelming odds. And uh, our scripture is from Second Chronicles in the Old Testament. Uh, the story is about uh, three nations that came to wage war against Israel. So three in one. Amen. It's also a message uh, for someone who is looking for a miracle. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So <clears throat> it's Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1 to 30. We're not going to read the whole thing at once. I'm just going to take it piece by piece. Hallelujah. This morning I believe somebody is here is struggling and they need a miracle. Maybe you need a miracle in your marriage. Maybe you need a miracle in your health. Maybe it is your career, jobs, or whatever it is that you're looking for God to touch you. This is your day. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, Second Corinthians Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter uh, 20, we start from verse 1. The Bible says, after this, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and with them, the Munites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. It was told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude has come against you from beyond the Dead Sea. From Edom and beyond, they are in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. Amen? Uh, it's like Yesterday, everything was beautiful, but suddenly, the next day, something happened. The very person that say, I love you, decide to say, I, I don't love you anymore. Or you, you went to work, and they told you, we are downsizing, and your name is in the list. You went just for a regular checkup in the hospital, and they told you, you need to go for surgery, and it's immediately. This is the kind of situation where these people are. They didn't have issue with these other nations, but they, those nations decided to just come and attack them. And their mission was to still kill and destroy. And it's the same mission of Satan in our lives today. Yes. He is like a roaring lion looking for whom he can devour. Yes. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. This is the situation. And uh, in 1 Peter 5, 8, Jesus said, Be sober, well balanced, and, and self-disciplined. Be alert and, and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. Amen? He is there trying to, to, to uh, give us or, or mess up our day. Hallelujah. You know, three nations coming against one. I remember I went to work one day, and this kind of situation happened to me. They told me we are downsizing. And uh, they asked me to uh, sign up this, these papers so I can get some severance. And I did. An hour later, I came home to my wife. I told him they, they, they just let me go. Things happen. Amen? Yeah. Jesus said, in this world, there will be troubles. Tribulations will come. Difficult times will come. Doesn't matter if you are holy, you come to church every day, this thing will happen to us. It will happen to us. And it's good for us to know. Hallelujah so that you don't go around and blame everybody else. These enemy nations gang up against Israel at the time King Jehoshaphat was the king. Hallelujah. Amen. They gang up together and they say, we are going to attack these people. And uh, let's continue here in uh, Have you ever had a day like that where just things become very crazy in your life. 
suddenly you have a, a huge bill that just show up. What, what, what would you do? Some people who don't know the Lord, and even some who know the Lord, will take some crazy decisions when stuff like that happens. Why do we have people with depressions? Because they could not handle stuff like that. Amen? Amen. Have you ever had something like that? You feel like everything seems to go wrong at once. Do you, have, do you ever feel like giving up? You want to give up. Jesus. You are not alone. Hallelujah. Amen. We have an enemy out there. Everything was rocking and bang. He or she said, I don't love you anymore. Amen. Amen. You are engaged and everything was about to finish. The wedding was about to take place. And suddenly say, uh -uh, I'm not going forward. I'm not moving forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Things happen. So we need to, you know, the Bible says, my people perish due to lack of knowledge. What I'm doing here today is just equipping us so that you are prepared. We cannot pray for no issue in life, but you can pray for wisdom. Solomon prayed for wisdom. Amen? So when things happen, you know what to do. Yes. Hallelujah? Amen. You know what to do. In uh, John 16, 33, the Bible says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering. Jesus knows the end from the beginning. Amen? He knows, he sees that this thing will happen to us. But be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. Yes. But he says this trouble will come our way. Hallelujah. Amen. Then let's see the reaction of King Jehoshaphat when this news came. Then it was reported to Jehoshaphat, a great multitude has come against you from beyond the Dead Sea, out of, of Aram and beyond. They are in Hazazon, Tamar. Then Jehoshaphat was afraid. Like many of us, we can be afraid as well. Amen? Amen. I can also testify to this, this bad news. My own brother one day, he was surprised with the news that he has... He has cancer. What do you do? This is terrible. The man never smoked, drink. I live crazy, crazier than him before Christ. But him, no. He was focused. He want to leave the country and come to the West and build his life. And suddenly, these bad news show up. He has a family like all of us. A mortgage, kids, young, and this news show up. He says he was fearful. He was afraid. May I tell you that fear is a normal reaction. Fear will always happen to us. You remember also the story of Elijah. A day before, he just slaughtered the whole prophets of Baal. And the next day, Jezebel told him, you know, you know what, what you did to my boys, I'm going to do for you too. <laughs> and, 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 and the man of God who slaughtered the whole prophets of Baal became afraid and said, ran for his life. And he hid in a place and he said, God, take me home. Take me home. I'm done with this. It's too much. It's too much. This is the man of God who called fire from heaven. Has any one of us called fire from heaven? <laughs> he's seen the miracle, he's seen the hand of God, he's seen the manifestation of God. And then he became afraid. Who are we not to be afraid? It says he was fearful. When suddenly they say, uh, 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 we are downsizing, what would you do? Fear will kick in. You start calculating, how am I going to pay my bills? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. How am I going to do it? He was afraid. May I tell you that fear is a, a normal reaction. Here are the, the three very able enemy coming against you. 
Their numbers is huge. Right? Their weaponry is a lot. And the Bible mentioned that they are not far. They are not far. They are very close. It's like you are told that you are only left with six, uh, six, six months to live. If they say three years, maybe you could have calculated, but it's still squeezed now. It's just six months or three months. This is bad news, right? Three nations ganging against one. And their mission is to steal, kill, and destroy, to annihilate. They have enough, but they want to, 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 to conquer and, and possess everything Israel had. And uh, there, there was a repetition of, of these events not, not too long ago. Even most of us were, were, were alive when you remember the, the Six Days War, when the whole Arab countries came up and they want to fight against Israel. It was only six days that thing finished. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the hand of God is upon their life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is normal to be afraid. Whatever things are overwhelming you, you right now, your problem is not that your initial response was you are afraid. But what do you do with the fear? Do you allow it to take over you? Some people would, would look for, for, for a weapon and shoot their head. I heard a story about a German businessman, very wealthy, during the last recession. He's, he's, he's into millions of dollars. And uh, uh, within a day, he lost a couple of those millions of dollars. But he still have a lot remaining. This guy decided to to go to the uh, train, train, uh, truck, train truck, and then he lay down there early in the morning, and that thing came and, and rolled on him. Just because he lost few, 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 few dollars. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's not your portion this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You will not die. Yes. You will live in Jesus' name. Yes. You will make the right decisions. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. When you are afraid in the situations, when you feel overwhelmed, when you feel a stress out, do you let the fear demotivate you? We should let the fear motivate us, not demotivate us, not stress us out. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It should not depress you. Listen very carefully to this statement. Never let an Im Im impossible situation intimidate you. Hallelujah. Let it motivate you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let it motivate you. You are not alone. Don't think that in the whole world it's you who have this problem only. Apostle told us a story about uh, a, a poor man in Africa. He thought that he was the poorest man. He had the only t-shirt. And he said, oh, God is not fair. So he decided, he said, I'm going to kill myself. So he went in the, in the, in the bush and then he said, I'm, not, I'm also going to, to, to uh, embarrass God and, and die naked. So he climbed up and then he took his uh, t-shirt and he threw it on the ground. And he was about to put his head in the, in the rope, and then he saw another poor man running and grabbed the t-shirt and said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he saw that there is another poorer person than him. So he said, no, I'm not dying. <laughs> Hallelujah. So don't think your issue is the most craziest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we are going to, to see the reaction, the reaction of uh, King Jehoshaphat. When you are facing incredible overwhelming odds, the first thing you need to do, according to what uh, Jehoshaphat did, let's see in uh, verse 3. Second Chronicles 20 and verse 3. Then Jehoshaphat feared and set himself, determined as his vital need to seek the Lord. He proclaimed a fast in Judah. Amen? The first thing he did is he tuned in to God. Yes. When fear came in, this issue is there. He did not call his mother or his grandmother yes. or he did not go to the bank or whatever. He did what? Yes. He tuned in to God. Yes. Hallelujah. He tuned in to God. Hallelujah. Turn to God first before you do anything else. You go to God directly. Amen? Amen. Say to God, I am overwhelmed. This is just too much for me. 
Because the God we serve, he hears us. He is not like the other gods. Those other gods are asleep. Amen? They are man-made. In a country like India, we have over 330 million gods. Amen? But we serve the living God who hears us. So you go to him and you open up and say, Daddy, this is what I'm going through. Do you think that he is surprised? Nothing will, will make him, you know, weird. Turn to God first. If it is financial issue, don't, don't run to the bank first. Turn to God. He will give you direction. Say to God, I'm overwhelmed. And ask God, what do you think about this situation? And you try to get God's perspective on the problem. The reason why is because our perspective is limited. Amen? God knows the, the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. He can see the beginning and the end. He can see past, present, and future all at, the, at once. You need to get the larger picture. Why this thing happened? Hallelujah. Amen. There's a story about a man who, who was walking in the desert and then he, uh, he, he, he fell in the hole. And when he fell there, uh, he, 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 I, I think before he felt, he, he, he on, on his way, he met with some robbers, and they, they cut his, uh, his, his fingers. And, uh, yeah, he, they cut his fingers. And, and when he was going, he met with these people who, who they, 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 they eat human beings. So, but they want a person who is whole. <laughs> Amen? You have to be complete. But this guy was not complete because the, 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 the finger is, is chopped off. So they look at him, they say, no, 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 you are not you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So sometimes things happen to us and we don't know. So we, we need to, to, to hear from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to hear from God. You don't know why things happen like that. Hallelujah. So he tuned in to God. And uh, let's, let's go to uh, verse 6 here. Verse 6. This is uh, the, the prayers that uh, Jehoshaphat did. And said, O oh, oh Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? So, like, when you are faced with a situation like this, first thing also you need to do is to, you need to remind yourself of who God is. Who this God of yours is. Amen. Amen. This man, he started to remind himself of who God is. And said, oh, oh, oh Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdom of the nations? In your hand are power and might, so that none is able to withstand you. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to remind yourself of who God is. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Remind yourself. Who is this God? He is powerful. He is great. He is mighty. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Amen? Amen. He is the God who parted the Red Sea. Yes. He is the one who created you. He is powerful. Amen. He starts to remind himself of who this God is. Hallelujah. Amen. He reminded himself. And do you not rule? Over all the kingdom of the nations, power and might are in your hand. There is no one able to take a stand against you. The first thing you need to do is to remind yourself, I say. He said, listen carefully, all you people of Judah. So, uh, we need to know this God we serve. Yes, amen. amen? Yes. You need to know this God. Hallelujah. This is the first point. And the second point is you need to also remember what God did in the past. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to have a, a remembrance of what God did in the past. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. 
You need to have a testimony. What has God done in your life? Because that way, you know that if he did it before there, what I'm going through here, I know he can do it again. Hallelujah. You need to have a testimony. Me, I have a strong faith when it comes to healing because I've seen firsthand what God did. I always say this uh, testimony here, we were in Borden and this guy had cancer. We prayed for him, normal prayer, there was no lightning or anything like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I did not, there was no, uh, 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 God did not tell me this guy is healed. We gone, we went home. Three months after that, we went to a different prison. There were six men before us. We started asking them, tell us why you are here. The second man on the row pointed at me and he said, you came to Borden. At the time I had cancer, liver cancer. You prayed for me. Since that day, no pain. I don't take any medication. <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe, is it a coincidence? The same man I was in Borden, we prayed for him and we came to Calgary. And this man was there. Even I did not recognize him, but he did. So God was trying to encourage me that you need to pray more. I did it before there, I can do it again. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And what I realized also with healing and stuff like that, there was a day I went to Edmonton to pray for my brother with uh, Evangelist Laurie. Uh, you know the, the, the syndrome of a relationship when you know each other, right? Uh, Jesus did not do a miracle in, in, in uh, his hometown, right? This happens to us as well. I, I, I would always feel the, 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 if there is faith in the person, but I didn't see faith in my brother. But I, I just have to pray. He did the, most of the prayer, but I know there is, there is nothing. You know, there is no faith in him. So, as we finished and we, we were walking, there was his neighbor there also sick. He uh, uh, started talking to him and said, come. I came, this guy could not talk, but he, 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 he perceived that we are a man of God and uh, uh, he started praying for him and, and I started praying for this man. And this man was, he had faith, man, he has faith. You know, when Jesus said, virtues left me, virtues was leaving me on this man. Amen. There was power oozing on him. Wow. Jesus. And the next the few minutes ago, nothing happened here. The next time I went there, this guy was not there. <laughs> this guy was not there. I believe this guy was totally healed. Amen. Because virtues was leaving me. There was power like electricity flowing on this man. So I know what I'm talking about. Amen. So when you come for prayer... Uh, uh, the, uh, Jesus said, uh, when you honor the prophet, you receive the prophet's reward. Yes. Yes. You know, you, you don't have to worship man, but you have to believe in this man. You know, uh, a lot of time, it's not about God. God, the healing is there already. It's not God. Right. right? It's not God. It's not heaven. It is us here. If you don't honor a person like me that want to pray for you, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. But if you look at me like Jesus, I'm not Jesus, right? And I pray for you, you will receive your, your miracle. You will receive it. You will receive it. Let's get into our, our message. So, the second thing here I say is, uh, I need to remind myself of what God has done in the past. What has gone down, uh, God done? That's why we need to keep a, a journal. Hallelujah. So that you can go back, keep a journal, even small things. Hallelujah. Keep a journal. Let's see in uh, Second Chronicles 20 and 7. He said, oh, did you not, oh our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? So he's reminding God. He knows what God did before. Hallelujah. Did you not, O oh our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people, Israel, 
and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? For sure you did. And it's not written there, did you not part the, the, the Red Sea? Did you not provide manna from heaven? Amen. Huh? So he, 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 he's, he's remembering what God did. And the, and the third part is, I need to remind myself that God can do it again. Because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. Chapter tw uh, verse 12. God can do it again. Amen. He healed before, he can heal again today. Amen. Doesn't matter what you're going through, if you believe and you have faith today, you will walk out here a free person. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have to wait for another service. He will do it again. Oh our God, will you not exercise judgment upon them? For we have no might to stand against this great company that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Our, our eyes are upon you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God can do it again. Amen. So when you are going through issues, you need to remember... That God is there. He can do it again. His prayer is actually built around three questions. Are you not? Did you not? Will you not? Hallelujah. Are you not God? Jehoshaphat says, if you are God, then you are in charge. You are in charge. These people will come. There are three nations against one. But you are God. Hallelujah. If you are God, then you are in charge. He says, if you are God, then you are big enough to handle it. Is there anything bigger than God? Is there anything bigger than your problem? Hallelujah. That God cannot do. He is able. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what you are going through, God can deliver you. He can fix the problem. Did you not help us in the past? Jehoshaphat concludes, yes, you did. You did help us in the past. Will you not do it again? Jehoshaphat says, yes. If it was, if it was you who did it before, you can do it again. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to encourage somebody this morning that believe that today is your day. Your day of miracle. Hallelujah. That God can do it again because he loves you. He loves you so much that he went to the cross for you. Hallelujah. The Bible says while you was, we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You were out there in the world but he died for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You need to have a testimony. You need to remember. Remember David, when he was uh, in front of Goliath, he said, while I was in the field there, there were bears and lions. They came. And I took care of that. If he did, for, for me, if he did it for me then, he can, this, this uncircumcised Philistine yes. will not stand too. The same God who took care of the bears and the lions will take care of this man here. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what your problem is. I realize that uh, some people just gave up. They said, this kind of problem I'm, I'm going through, you know, uh, they prayed for me many times. I'm just going to live with it. I know people like that. Jesus. Even in this church. But I pray that will change. Amen. That you will believe again. Yes. There is nothing so difficult that God cannot fix. Yes. Maybe you say it's only headache that Jesus can heal. <laughs> huh? He can heal headache. He can take care of cancer. Huh? He can take care of anything. Depression. We'll live like that. Yes. We'll melt like that in Jesus' name. Yes. So this morning, let faith arise in you. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And the other point is you need to admit your need. You need to admit your need. Hallelujah. A lot of us, especially men, men from Africa, we, we are very strong. We cannot, you cannot cry out, say I'm a man. <laughs> you cannot cry out. You cannot say, I have a problem. I have a problem. I have pain here. Huh? We men, we don't say that. I have crisis in my house. It's falling down. You know, uh, in the, in the days when we, 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 got just, we got married, there, there were a lot of fights. 
because it's like I would like to make my wife into my image. Yes. There are certain things that I want her to fix to, 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 to look like me. <laughs> A lot of fight, but <laughs> thank God Hallelujah. it's no more. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've, we've grown, grown uh, uh, matured now. <laughs> There are certain things you, you will not win. You just let God take care of that. Yeah. Amen? If you want to have your, your woman at home. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You cannot change her. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Maybe you, you enter this marriage with certain things that you want to see in the, in the, in the family. Or expectation in your wife or your husband. And it's, it's not there. It's contrary. And you want to fix it. You cannot fix it. You're going to break it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Just let it be. Let it be, let it be. For those who are not married, just learn from these nuggets. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you don't have to win every fight. Be, be a loser sometimes, just for the sake of you have your woman at home. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 12, is still we're in 12, yeah. Uh, this is where uh, he... I admit that they are, they, are, they, are, they are powerless. Hallelujah. No, no might to stand against this great company that is coming against us. We do not know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. You know, when you, you focus on your problem, then you expand your problem. Right. Amen. The, 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 the issue becomes very big. We need to focus on God. Yeah. We need to focus our eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. So, Father, this thing is, is big, but I know that you can take care of it. Hallelujah. Even in my life, a lot of times, uh, there are certain things that's overwhelming. You don't want to think about it. Just, just give it to Jesus. Because it's too great. Amen? Have you ever felt powerless to deal with an issue in your, in your marriage, your, your career, or somewhere in your life? It's just too big to deal with it. Hallelujah. You got to trust God. We need to trust God to help us when we are going through stuff. Verse 12 says, we are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us and we do not know what to do. He confessed his, his weakness. We do not know what to do. But remember, before there, he... he uh, magnified God. He knew who this God is. Yes. He knew what this God did before. Amen? So he knows that these people coming, God will take care of them. Hallelujah. But our eyes are on you. We, we need to, to, to turn our eyes on Jesus a lot of time. Otherwise, the issues of life will take over our life. Amen? Amen. Let's see God's response to Jehoshaphat's prayer. In uh, verse 14. Because all this time, it's Jehoshaphat and the people uh, uh, crying to God. The God we serve, he, he still hears our prayers and he answers our prayers. Yes. Amen? Verse 14 says what? Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jezel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Esau. In the midst of the assembly, he said, Hearken, all Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you king, of Je king Jehoshaphat, the Lord says to you, this to you, be not afraid or dismayed at this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the, the battle is no, not yours, but God's. You know, talking about my brother, the cancer issue and all that uh, is, too, is too, you know, he, he has suffered for a long time. And we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. Uh, what kept me going and praying for him is uh, I've seen a couple of uh, visions and dreams about him. About five times I would see him totally healed. I would see him even looking younger and handsome than what he is. Amen. Not one time, not two times, to five times. I would see him like that. You know, God is, this is God is saying, you keep praying. Amen. Yes. Keep praying. To, 
keep praying. The other day, he went for, uh, uh, he went for uh, emergency to the hospital, and they told him, they check him out, they say, your neck is broken. He said, what? How can that happen? I'm sitting here. They, they, they insisted. And they say, you got to go for, for surgery right away, right away. They didn't want him even to, to walk or to move around. It's like his head is going to collapse. And then uh, they told him, you have only 5% chance of, of coming out of this thing, of survival. We're going to do it, but you only have 5%. But because I saw those dreams, I, I, I knew this is, he can go through this stuff. And then he went, he went for this surgery. And then few, three days after that, the wife called me and said, uh, you need to be here tomorrow. Uh, they said they're going to remove the tubes and oxygen from your brother. And uh, he, he, he might not make it. He might not make it. So I dropped everything. I got a friend. The guy told me, I will drive you. So, okay, the next morning we went, I went to his house, I went to the passenger seat, and something told me, you need to go back to the driver's seat. If you are on the passenger seat, it's like you're giving up. Yeah. You are giving up. So, I went to the passenger seat, and we drove to, to Edmonton. I found him there, they said, midday. Midday is when they're going to pull everything, and they will believe he's, he's not going to make it. Jesus. I start praying for him, praying for him. Even in that stage, tears start coming from his eyes. I, I, I knew he, he's, he's alive. How can you, how can you cry when, when uh, you know, if you, are, if you are not okay? So, they're just waiting for midday. Midday show up. And they were preparing him for death. There was no preparation for, for living here. There was no uh, nurses to clean him up or whatever. They just pulled it roughly too. And uh, he started coughing and breathing. And It's our people, who not the nurse, who start cleaning him. Right? So they did that to him. And the guy started getting better. Within half an hour, he said, I want to see my kids. Aha. You see? I want to see my kids. The guy survived. And uh, he stayed in the hospital for two weeks. Then they moved him to rehab, three weeks. Now he's home. Now he's home. Hallelujah. So... God answers our prayer. Yes. So what, whenever you are going through something, you pray, you seek God, right? So God can give you the insight. Open your eyes to see what you are going through. That will give you a faith to keep going. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are waiting for, for, a, for a, a mate, a husband or something, you pray, you pray. I believe God will, will show you that person. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see yourself in a wedding dress. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then don't tell a lot of people about it. Just walk around. <laughs> don't tell people about it. <laughs> they know that this is this person who is single, right? But you've seen it. Hallelujah. Amen. That can apply to anything. Even your health. Right? Yes. You see yourself healed. I, I, I truly believe that God... Because it happens to me. God opens my eyes. I see things. Right? He's not a respect of a person. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. He's shown my brother five times. Totally healed. The last time I saw him, they were driving in a car. The wife was driving and he opened the passenger seat door. And he started walking out. Very clean like this. I knew this man would survive. But the doctors wrote him off. But Jesus has the final say. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus has the final say. They told him you have five uh, uh, percent chance of survival. Five, what is five? <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. So, God said, this battle is not yours. Praise the Lord. You don't have to fight it. 
this, this guy can go and sleep. <laughs> you know, he can go and sleep. People say, King, how are you, why are you sleeping? When the enemies, they are coming. He didn't know that God told him, you know, uh, the battle is his. So there are a lot of battles in our life that is stressing us out. It's because we are fighting God's battle. Let's give it to God. If you are stressing out, you want to fix it, it's not happening, it's not in your power. Give it to God. Amen. You pray about it and pray about it and pray about it and leave it to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Leave it to God. Praise Jesus. Amen. God still speaks today. Praise the Lord. He said, listen carefully, in verse 15, Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat, the Lord says, be not afraid. Today I want to tell somebody, be not afraid, or dismayed at what you are going through. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't be discouraged. God is in charge. Hallelujah. Amen. He is powerful. He hears your prayers. Hallelujah. When you pray, doesn't matter if he's taking care of issues in China or Iran, he hears your prayer. He will not put you on hold. Hallelujah. He will not say, I'm still busy taking care of some issues there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The reason why you are fatigued all the time and so tired is because you are trying to fight God's battle. That's right. Just pray and leave it alone. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And see the hand of God. Because when you're trying to fight battle that is not yours, you get worn out. Yes. You get tired. And life becomes hard. If you are a wife in a house, if you are like that, then the, all the atmosphere in the house is, is, is messed up. Because the women control the, 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 the environment in the house. If she is not happy, nothing is working out here. Hallelujah. She has to be happy. She is not happy. It affects everything. You walk in this house, you can feel it right away. Hallelujah. Us men, when we have issues at home, when we go to work, we behave. It's like nothing is happening. Nothing happened. We are happy, enjoying, talking, drinking coffee. But the wife, when she goes to work, she carries the same issue with her. Wherever she goes, it's, it's there. It's until it's solved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, don't fight battle that is not yours. Don't fight battles that is not yours. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that your miracle, you will find it today in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. That you don't have to go through what you're going through anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 17 says you, you, you need not to fight in this battle. Take your position and stand and witness the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. God will give us strategies how to fight our battles. Sometimes he just speaks to you and it, it gives you rest and peace. Like the story of my brother, I have peace right now. Hallelujah. Amen. He don't have a, 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 a whole healing right now, but I believe he's coming. Amen. He came far. There's a lot of steps that happen in his life. The doctors are even puzzled. Very puzzled. Because even he told me when he was sleeping, they're telling him he cannot make it throughout the, during this night. He cannot make it. Tomorrow he will not be here. Oh, wow. He is hearing it. Yeah. Because it's just a curtain. Yeah. Wow. But the man is here. Praise the Lord. Amen. The man is here. Amen. So it doesn't matter what you are going through. Believe this God. Yeah. Believe this God. He's not like these other gods. Amen. Whether it's sickness, it's cancer, it's whatever. God, this thing will melt away. In Jesus' name. Amen. It will melt away. Hallelujah. Amen. You will be free in Jesus' name. Amen. 
you will be free in Jesus name amen thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord hallelujah let's go to 21 now 21 21 21 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers to sing to the Lord and praise him in their holy garments as they went out before the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and loving kindness and do us forever. You know, uh, the, the, the weapon that God uh, asked these people to use is to begin to, to, to praise the Lord. Amen? Instead of of uh, using bazookas or uh, things like that, God asked them just to sing. As they begin to, to, to sing, the Lord lay ambush. Amen? Amen? You remember the story of Paul and Silas? They were in jail. They were in jail. Not the jail, the kind of jail we have in Canada here. In, in Africa, is that same closer to that. I've been to such jail in Egypt. I was in that kind of jail where there's no TV and all this good stuff, right? <laughs> this guy, they were bleeding and bruised and hungry and cold. What did they uh, do? They started worshiping God. Yes. As they started worshiping God, the foundation of, of the prison shook. And their chain were broken. Hallelujah. And these same people, uh, the Bible mentioned that as they, they start to, to sing, the Lord lay ambush. There is power in praise. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. There is power in praise. So I would encourage you to be a, a worshiper. Not only in church, but even in your house. Yes. Begin to worship. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. If you cannot sing like a lot of us here, you can just put some music and just follow that. Hallelujah. Yes. As you do that, walls will start coming down. Yes. Walls will come down. Chains will be broken. Yes. Hallelujah. Depression will be lifted from you in Jesus' name. God's hand will come upon your life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at the effect of praise when they praise in uh, 22. When they began singing and praising, 22. When, when they began to sing and, and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the, the men of Ammon. Hallelujah. And, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah and they were slaughtered. It's just the power of praise. Hallelujah. So we need to seek God when we are going through issues and he will give us exactly what we need to fight this battle. Sometimes he just wants you to keep quiet. Hallelujah. Instead of rushing to the bank, sometimes he just wants you to, to wait. Because he have this other person who is going to bless you. And you went and got yourself into big debts. Praise the Lord. You wait on God. You pray and believe that he will speak to you. Hallelujah. You wait until he speaks to you. Praise the Lord. Whether you think like you want to move to Toronto, is it God's will for you to move to Toronto? You seek God. You go and ask God, Father, I want to move to Toronto. God said, no, no, no. Calgary is the place for you. I planted you in this church. Where are you going? When you go to Toronto, your mail will come to Calgary. Praise the Lord. Your mail will be here. Your blessings will be here. And you are not here. Hallelujah. And God say, okay. He has two, I give him more. The one that is supposed to be yours, they give it to somebody else. Hallelujah. Even when it comes to things like marriage, a lot of times girls look at the outer appearance. Hallelujah. You don't know that this is the prophet that is going to raise uh, uh, people from the dead. Amen. You know that this is a billionaire, but you look at him, he's not six foot tall. He's a little bit down here. He said, no, 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 no. He's, he, he's not the one. <laughs> Pray, let God open your eyes and you see. I know even in this church, uh, it's like uh, uh, they will write you out. Education, you did not finish your university, no college. Where are you working? In the warehouse. Come on. Disqualified. <laughs> Disqualified. Like me, not a university graduate. I went to see my woman here in, in Ottawa. The credential did not line up. The family. 
But anyway, my woman insists, she moved, we are married, right? We're not doing bad now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> huh? They said, no, he's not graduate. <laughs> huh? But he's a man of God. Praise the Lord. He's a man of God. And some of these people that you write off, they are powerful. You, you, you just see from the outside. You see from the outside. But the inside, you don't know what God called this man to be. Ten years from now, he has a private jet. Hallelujah. And you miss it. Because you look at the outside. Not, you need to, 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 to check with God. Father, this man say he wants to marry me. Is he the one? Is he the one? God say he is the one. Hallelujah. And you tell your friends, they say, I know. Mistake, 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 mistake. Mistake. Hallelujah. Mistake. So let's seek God. When we have issues, let's what? Seek God. Because he hears and he gives us the answer. When he gives you the answer, you become, you have faith in you. You got something to run with. Yeah. Hallelujah. You got something to run with. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like we've seen here, these people were giving a strategy. Don't fear. Don't fight this battle. It is the Lord's. Yes. All you need to do, get the worship team, let them go before us. Right. Let Betia lead the way. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let Betia lead the way, and all they do is sing. Sing, that's it. As they start singing, the Lord confused these people. They look at each other, they, knew, they look at each other as enemies. They start killing each other. Yeah. What? What kind of thing is this? It's the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. No fight, just sing. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So in your own personal life, apply these principles. Yeah. You can fear, that's okay. But after that fear, what do you do? Yeah, Remember what God did before? If he can do it there, he can do it here again. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. And he's not a respect of a person. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to ask the worship team to come back here. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to do some worship here. Makati karamba kosi ke teke re kelembe ke ti karamba ya. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I can feel the fire. Maramando kosi ke rembe ke ti ka. Li karama ko teke rembe ke ti ka ya. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, if you are, you need a prayer, you need a miracle, you need something, you need healing, you need whatever it is, you can come in front here as the worship is going on. And we're going to pray and believe for a miracle in your life. If you can sing this song, what, what man of, of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you rise up? Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's the same. He's the same. He's the same. He's the same today. That Jesus is the same today. So what man of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Just come in front, we're gonna pray for you.